Black people are a resilient people. We're seeing this um, all across the world and through every moment in time. We've seen Black people have to uh, deal with so many different obstacles and still persevere. Owning a business, a black owned business, is resilience. Um, you know, being able to find trust in our medical system is resilience, especially knowing the history of medical atrocities in marginalized communities and black people specifically. Um, so having trust in our, our community, our community doctors and our community health centers is resilience. Um, you know, supporting local businesses just so that they can stay afloat is resilience. Um, so I think one thing I'd like to say for this Black History Month is as a Black people, we will just have to continue to shine and continue to support one another, show up for one another, and lean on each other. This year, The Corner has worked on making a special gift for Black businesses in Black History Month. It is a symbol of appreciation and gratitude to the resilience of black people, businesses, and history. So for this year's Black History Month, um, uh, the team at the corner, you know, a, a lot of us, we understand that black history is deeply grounded both in, you know, historical, um, you know, oppressions and, and traumas but also is deeply rooted in the present because a lot of those oppressions and those challenges have not necessarily gone away and gaps still exist so when we think about what we're doing at the corner the goal is always to build capacity and to build community capacity and that starts by looking at underlying structures of oppression and marginalization that occur in St. Jamestown and then developing the community response for it. This is really important in the context of the Black community because the Black community in Canada, in many cities in Canada and especially in Toronto is under-resourced um, severely comparative to the scale of challenges that they might face and the marginalization that they face from the settler colonial governments. So we want to have a conversation space and a community discussion to animate uh, different ways to get organized, to work together and to build community and to figure out how we as a community space owned by nobody and owned by everybody at the St. James Town Community Corner can support black communities organizing for a better, more just, more equitable future and then offering our services and our space to be a hub to be able to do that in a good way with extensive community consultation and with extensive community support. This year in St. James Town, we decided to go around the neighborhood exploring the different tastes of love and success. We're here to share culture, share what we're all about. Um, languages, um, our food, um, the way we're all brought up, how we believe, our, our cultures, you know, there's, there's a whole lot. I mean, Africa has tons and tons of languages, you know, and, and different cultures, you know. So, and they're all unique in their own different ways. So those are the things we're trying to like uh, bring out. Dudu, a longtime resident in St. James Town, will be our tour guide in this journey. My name is Mohammed Adam Dudu. I've been here for almost 15 years now. He knows every corner and the story of building it. Together with him, we will explore the different Ethiopian businesses in the neighborhood. So, keep watching! These businesses represent the Ethiopian community. The Ethiopian community has been a big part of St. James Town for many years. You'll find the rich history, cultures, religions, and languages in harmony around the corners. Ah, uh, St. James Town is a uh, very, very central 
community area. I like the fact that uh, the area is all supportive to black community and we do have a lot of uh, Africans or like Canadian black community plus uh, everyone who really support this business to survive until like today. Um, well, number one, I'm not a business owner in the neighborhood, so I definitely can't speak to all the different opportunities there is for them and their needs. Um, but I think one thing for sure is definitely shopping local. I will say uh, St. Jamestown is one of those neighborhoods where people are really good about uh, patronizing their local restaurants and grocery stores and market stalls uh, that sense of community is definitely here um, but there can always be more and also just like highlighting some of those businesses we have in the neighborhood especially like the restaurants we have so many delicious restaurants in the neighborhood um, so being able to talk about that and give them all that like positive press that they deserve especially when you think about how a lot of people have moved to ordering food off of um, delivery apps which absolutely makes sense in this day of age um, but when you think about the fact that those apps like take a percentage of the sales and um, the cost to get the iPads and all that kind of startup um, so I'd say like one of the easiest ways residents can support is just walking into your local restaurant or local business and buying from them. In addition to the difficulties that a newcomer would normally face, COVID came to test the grounds and create new techniques for facing challenges. When we saw uh, the COVID numbers come out in the city of Toronto, um, 88% of people who caught COVID were racialized minorities. And I think about 23% of those people, or almost a quarter, uh, were black. This doesn't include, of course, the Latin American community, which was 7% of all COVID cases. And many of us from Latin America, including myself, have black ancestors, such as my father. Um, I think that when we think about this, uh, you know, and how residents from uh, racialized minority communities, especially black residents, were so failed by the pandemic that when we think about the pandemic being over uh, or going back to normal, like the government was saying, uh, you know, we are not uh, including all the voices that were affected by COVID in our transitional phase and our transitional response. There needs to be a post-COVID community conversation so that Black communities in St. James Town can build back better. There needs to be supports that are greater than what is being given to businesses across the board for Black-owned businesses, which have been taking out lines of credit, um, you know, facing very short businesses, literally losing customers because customers are isolating and dying of COVID. Um, we need to think about, you know, centering those conversations and we need to do it equitably. This means having conversations with black communities, but in many different languages, such as Amharic and Arabic uh, for East African communities here. And I think it's really important to have a space to begin to start those conversations because black communities were affected in a way that was more specific and more insidious because it was by design from settler colonial governments and from a structurally racist system. And if we are considering ourselves community rooted service providers, we need to be able to be those first responders and first responders and first people to animate those community conversations if we actually are going to be taking an anti-racist framework and an anti-racist lens when working with community. Like we are almost like uh, we open it just before the pandemic, so it affects us in so many ways. We couldn't even afford to close and go away because we spend a lot of money to buy the business. Uh, but uh, me and my partner together working like 12 hours, 13 hours a day, uh, we're still here. Yeah, business is it's down than before. We are doing good, but it could be better. 
One of the landmarks of St. James Town is Abbas. Uh, my name is Ahmed Kaysal, and uh, yeah, this is Halal Butcher Store. Uh, we do barbecue here, we sell a lot of uh, spices and meats, and everything is halal. Uh, we came, uh, me and my family, 15 years ago, about exactly 14 and a half, and yeah, we're here. On the other side of the street, you can see Shalom welcoming you and offering delicious traditional Ethiopian food. So, my name is Saba. And I, I have another uh, partner named Nezazi or Titi. So we opened this restaurant in um, 2019 October, and just before the pandemic. And we're still here. Michael, a professional photographer, is a resident of St. James Town who immigrated from Eritrea eight years ago. With Abraham, his partner, they created Alpha. My name is Michael, uh, and uh, I live uh, in uh, St. James Town. Alpha, um, it's a, a photo and a video production uh, company, and uh, we have been uh, we opened it uh, in 2019. It serves uh, uh, for different culture and specifically in. Eritrean and Ethiopian culture. Uh, and uh, we cover a lot of footage uh, or a lot of events, uh, cultural events, uh, starting with weddings, um, baptism, birthdays, meetings. Uh, we do virtual uh, meetings with uh, companies, even we do with uh, embassies, with Ethiopian embassy. I came in uh, 2011 to Canada. Uh, I was doing a photo and a video at back home. Uh, so uh, when after I came to Canada, I was planning to start uh, my own business uh, with my profession. Unfortunately, I didn't do it at the first time because um, uh, at that time, I was looking for a, a guaranteed job, so I shifted to uh, other uh, profession. Uh, I was recommended by families and friends to uh, to take a nursing course, and that was a guaranteed job at that time. And uh, uh, right away, I studied nursing, uh, and after I right away after I graduate, um, I, uh, I I was feeling to. Uh, go back to my uh, passion or my previous profession and right away I shifted to photo doing photo and uh, video uh, production uh, and uh, slowly I try to bring all uh, my uh, <clears throat> my clients back and uh, after a while uh, I came up with an idea why don't I, I start my own company um, so uh, I met a friend which has the same idea and uh, we came to uh, an agreement to start uh, um, like any studio or video production company and uh, in 2019 uh, we opened up uh, uh, Alpha which is now <coughs> doing a good job in uh, the whole Toronto and GTA. Um, yeah, we are serving our uh, community um, with different uh, services, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we are glad. Like we are working with our community. It's uh, for especially for newcomers. They wanna like <clears throat> get a service with uh, uh, familiar uh, culture or uh, who understand the culture. So. Um, uh, it, we are doing uh, so far good. Um, so we wanted to make a small connection uh, from like uh, the, especially for the new generations uh, to know about their culture, uh, what it looks like at back home. So uh, we built this uh, traditional kitchen um, at back home. 
uh, of course, we, uh, this is how we build, uh, we cook uh, the bread, uh, we call it injera. <coughs> so, here is how uh, they use uh, like an oven to cook the injera. Uh, we, they put here uh, uh, woods to, uh, they use woods here uh, to, uh, for, for fire. We built this to have an idea uh, of Eritrean or Ethiopian culture. So we brought, we, call, we met <coughs> collectives from friends from back home and from different places and we put some. Alpha is not the only African media house that aims to spread the African culture and show different aspects of black culture. So every time Black History Month comes up, we, we talk about, it should be all about how to better the standing of the black man, how to make our position understand understood by the by, by those around us um to let them know that there's a whole lot of positivity with the black man that we can all tap into and that our lives matter and if only we're given the chance um we can do a whole lot more you know and it's not all about racism or race and stuff like that there's um it's it's unity of love and kindness that we need to show to ourselves non Feel Flicks is a project and media company that David has been working on for more than five years. non Feel Flicks, um, it's an idea from uh, a friend, more like a brother, um, childhood friend way back. And um, he started out, it started out like um, a media house, like a radio uh, station, something like that. And then, you know, dragging ideas back and forth, decided to look, why don't we just make it a full blown uh, media house, you know, that's gonna like delve into not just film, but um, everything entertainment and news um, that connects with everyone around the world, especially uh, the black folks. Um, because the truth of the matter is this, we are the only ones that can tell our own stories, you know. Um, not foreign medias. It's only the story can only be told from the black man's perspective. So um, that was um, why that platform was created to also give uh, filmmakers, black filmmakers and actors, an opportunity to showcase what they have and their talents. Because um, I'll just give you an example. Um, look at um, Chadwick um, Bosman. Um, he had played different roles uh, when he started his career and he was always casted as a villain and stuff like that. And until he put his foot down and look, he doesn't want to play those roles anymore. He wants to do something um, quite different. And that was how he landed the role of being a Black Panther superhero, because we believe that we have more to us than just being um casted for roles as villains, as uh, murderers and stuff like that. So we just want to tell our own good side of the story. So uh, non Phil Flicks was created to uh, bridge that gap, to give um, filmmakers an opportunity to showcase the talent, to tell the stories. Uh, so we're not just into just um, film, but music, sports and news live TV shows, um, talk shows, and everything that has to do with entertainment. A couple of years back, I think five or six years now, if I'm not mistaken, that's when it was like running. And the topics varied, you know, we, we had uh, news from all from different countries. We, we talked about so many things, every breaking news we, we talk. So we're not specific to certain topics. We just discuss what's happening at a particular region, just like you have uh, the regular news you can hear on radio or on CNN or any of the media stations and, or houses. That's what we also try to bring out. Uh, though now we're trying to, we're still building it. You know, we're still trying to like create more content and make sure that um, the news we bring out is, 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 is going to be more focused. And because at the end of the day, we're trying to educate we're trying to inform. We're also trying to entertain 
our listeners. So we bring out the truth the way it is and try to see if we can also prefer some solutions that will make it better, you know, um, just to, and then try to mirror the, what happens in Africa as compared to uh, the Western world. What are the Western world doing that we can emul emulate and um, bring to Africa that will bring about development? Because I think it's about time we stop being um, regarded as a third world country or the developing countries. We have all the riches, all the diamonds, all the oil that can turn us around as, 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 as a world economic power. And, and those are the things we're trying to like put out there and make sure that people understand uh, because uh, like I said, one of the major problem is leadership. Mm -hmm. True. And because leadership was left to, people didn't believe in politics. We didn't understand the concept of, of politics. So those who understood it, we left it for the uh, hoodlums, uh, uh, the, the, the ones who don't really understand who got there and now they don't want to let go of power, right? Because they, it, it tastes so sweet. They don't want to let go of it. Um, so it's hard to, to get the, the professors, the educated people, the uh, engineers uh, to get in there and do the right thing. You know, if we all have the same equal opportunities, I'm sure we'll all thrive. The world will be at, at peace. So um, first, we're going to focus on trying to bring up the stories of the black man and then preach humanity and make sure that everybody understands that it's all about humanity. Black history is full of stories of resilience and strength. And what is being written now shapes a new chapter of new success stories and achievements. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out all of our social media platforms. For more information, check out our website. Thank you.